So what were the drivers for these discussions? We were envisioning in a scenario where there are major breakthroughs in mobile technologies and language translation technologies. And as a result of this, billions more come online. What are these billions of people doing? Guess what? They're joining social networks. And what else are they doing? They're generating and controlling the content of the internet. The two most common terms that I heard during the discussions, other than the word internet, were Facebook and privacy together. And the reason for that is because many of these things ended up being value discussions. For some in the audience and in the, in the discussions were issues, for others were non-issues. But the things we discussed other than privacy were, for example, freedom of expression, censorship, editorial control, creating and preserving and managing <coughs> online identities for different uh, groups of people. We look, for example, at inclusion and diversity online. These are some of the things where we saw this as scenario uh, playing uh, different ways for different people. The other thing that came out, out of the discussions is the question as to whether or not internet users are properly and appropriately represented either directly through intermediaries or via markets. In other words, just by walking away, by taking their wallet somewhere else where they can speak loudly enough to control the future of the internet. The third question that came out is whether or not the internet world will continue to be US-based and English spoken as it has been so far. And many argued that because of the advent of these billions of new users, it will not be this way. That the next generation, for example, of social networking platforms may not be um, created in companies in the United States. And finally, there was a recognition that there's a need to elevate the political discourse about the internet, uh, perhaps even a la pirate party in Europe, create an internet party here in the United States as a viable alternative. So what are the recommendations that we have to offer? Well, in 2020, the IGF will continue to focus on education, awareness, and sharing of best practices. The IGF should have at least 100,000 participants and not the 200 people that we see here. And most of those, of course, will not have to fly to Washington, D.C., to the law center here. However much we grow, we cannot accommodate 100,000 people. Uh, but instead, we'll participate remotely. And perhaps instead of the social, after these sessions, we can have a virtual party online for everybody participating. Smart use and engagement will be necessary. We will rely on crowdsourcing and also social research to make sure that we take into account not only the views of those 100,000 participating, but also many others. And the idea is also to make it more inclusive and more diverse, and yet preserve the egalitarian nature of the AGF by which anybody can speak and can share his or her views. And finally, our question is, should the official language of the AGF be Chinese? And with this, I conclude to summarize in this scenario.